Dr. Farley, you taught you teach physicians right now. Talk about what are some of the point what some of the points are that you hit with them and why why you need to actually do that. If huh. you know they're already physicians, we would think that that should be enough. Not one school in the not one medical school in the United States teaches a course a physician course in nutrition. Mm -hmm. Yet, if you read studies from around the world, we find that nutrition plays a huge role in health. How can we leave out one of the primary movers of our health, whether it be up or down, mm -hmm. and just leave it out of medicine? Doctors are, are taught rope memory. I've been there. I've sat, out, I've sat on a floor, literally, because I couldn't afford the textbook. It was a $700 textbook. And read the chapters from one of, my other, one of the other students in the class. Went in, closed the book, went in, take the test, and ace it. And how much do you remember when you walk mm -hmm. out? <laughs> Most physicians will agree with me that you lose about 85% of what you've memorized mm -hmm. within the first two years that you're practicing. Mm -hmm. By the 10th year, if you haven't realized that you don't know anything about medicine, then you're not bright enough to be a physician. <laughs> because you learn from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. And when these physicians see their patients not getting well, and they see they start them on one drug, and all of a sudden they're on seven drugs. Most good physicians, I'll, I'll say all good physicians, realize at that point, I need some help. I really need to know more about physiology. What I told you about arterial sclerosis, that's basic physiology. We know that insulin causes these tears mm -hmm. in the endothelium of the arteries. We know that cholesterol will plug those up. Why do we forget it and start giving statin drugs instead of saying, stop taking sugar? When it's been shown that many of the statin drugs actually increase the incidence of heart attacks. Hmm. So it's the doctors that, I do not teach doctors that have come right out of medical school. They've been brainwashed. I was brainwashed, mm -hmm. thought I knew everything, learned real quick, didn't know anything, and uh, had a phenomenal endocrinology professor at George Washington University. He's the one that actually got me into that forensic program. Uh, we had to do a year-long uh, year project for endocrinology, and I did. And in my project, I wasn't getting the results. This was half of our grade. I was on scholarship. If I, you know, dropped below a 3.5, I was in deep doo-doo. Mm -hmm. And I got the results back, and they weren't what I expected. And I took them to this professor, and I said, Doctor, this is what I've got, and this is what it says I should have. So either the standards they're using from the National Institute of Health are wrong, or my theory's wrong. And he kind of chuckled and he looked at me and said, well, you better hope you can prove that NIH is wrong. And I did. And that's when I realized that a lot of these things that were being taught are not static. They don't stay the same. They change. Mm -hmm. A good example is when I started practicing, if you had a, glu a fasting glucose level over 90, you were considered a high risk for type 2 diabetes. Within five years, it was 100. And five years after that, it was 105. And now it's 115 to 120. Does that mean you're not type 2 diabetic, you know, mm -hmm. at 90? No. It means that the norm has shifted. That wonderful thing we call within the norm, where you have 2% below, 2% above, and 96% of the public is healthy. <laughs> and if you believe that, you believe anything. But as our society gets sicker, our percentage of body fat goes up, mm -hmm. our fasting glucose levels go up, and these norms go up. 
we're actually getting much less healthy, but we're in that normal range. Mm -hmm. 